Hi, friends. Dr. Nancy Trimbley here, putting the power and knowledge of your health back in your hands. But everybody's doing it. I'm not. I'm not getting the vaccine. I'm not. And you may be thinking yourself that you want to say, no, thank you. I'll just pass because you are correct in thinking that there's been not enough time in the trials to unleash this onto hundreds of thousands of people. That previous animal studies have been unsuccessful. I'm going to do a separate YouTube video on that. And I'll explain in detail what that means that 100% of the animals in the long-term studies died when using the messenger RNA reformat. Now remember, I don't call it a vaccine because that's the other thing. This is not a vaccine. It's not an inoculation. This messenger RNA reformat is telling, this, telling the cells of your body to do something that they don't naturally do to create something your body does not normally create, and then your body, your immune system, attacks that. Again, I'm going to do another YouTube video on how all that works, guys, and I, I know that's a very heady subject, and most people cannot wrap their head around it. Here's the other thing. The, the reformat, the vaccine, has, it does not eradicate the virus. What it has shown to do in their 28 days where they studied it is that people did not have severe infections with COVID. They were not hospitalized. But the moderate symptoms where you could have long hauling symptoms, where you are sick for two weeks, that still goes. The mild symptoms where you just have a headache for a few days, that's still there. People can still transmit the virus. Your body will still be shedding the virus, meaning you may have zero symptoms, but it will still be coming out through your saliva and your breath and your, your, your vapor. So in the trials, it, the vaccine was not proven to be effective. It was, in my opinion, the word effective has been misused. And I do another YouTube video on that. I've already done that. It's called effective vaccine. If somebody tries to shame you into getting the reformat, and I know you've experienced this, either like you don't want to be the one who infects somebody and then they die, you don't want to be labeled as this or that group because you do or do not believe that the reformat is a good thing, that you do or do not choose to do something in your body. You're afraid you're going to be labeled as something you're not. That's horrible. We should not be tolerating that in the world today. And you may also know, or maybe not, that the fact that they say that getting this messenger RNA reformat creates herd immunity. That is a complete falsehood. The way, now this is a ninth grade science topic. This is not some new concept. Herd immunity has been studied for hundreds of years. And the traditional vaccine inoculations, like for smallpox and for the measles, because they gave you a little bit of what was going to make you sick, your body reacted to the actual, the actual disease and created immunity to that. Also, you, if you're my age, you might remember that there was chicken pox parties. If one of us had chicken pox, we would go and have a, have a, a play date with our friends so that everybody could get the chicken pox or maybe they would just be exposed to it and not get it, but that would still create immunity. That is herd immunity. The messenger RNA reformat does not do that because it is not giving you the traditional little piece of what's gonna make you sick. It's not doing that. So the concept of we'll all be safer if everybody gets that, complete falsity. And I don't know how, where that started from. I don't watch the news. I don't listen to the news anymore. Um, so if that came from someplace specific, if you know out there, please leave something in the comments so I can follow up on who started that. 
The other thing I want to say about herd immunity is that um, I have read an article, and I'll I'll uh, I'll maybe do a whole separate YouTube video on herd immunity, that the CDC changed its definition of herd immunity somewhere during the last year, during the whole COVID pandemic crisis, from that it can be acquired, herd immunity can be acquired naturally, like the chicken pox party, or it can be acquired from a vaccine. Only a traditional inoculation vaccine can infer herd immunity. And I'm gonna go off on a little bit of tangent here because we're talking about how you can say no and not, and not want to ostracize people because honestly, it's everybody's choice. It's everybody's choice to do this or not. If you feel like you wanna sign up, go ahead, you do that. But here's the other thing about herd immunity. You, um, I meet people who say, well, you gotta wear a mask all the time. Gotta wear a mask all the time. Okay, because somebody might be shedding the virus. Okay, that would have to be a lot of people to wear a mask all the time, like outside, inside, everywhere you go. Which means that in, you, in, in the logic of that, it must be true that a, a great portion of people are shedding the virus with no symptoms because you look at them and they don't look sick. They don't look feverish. They're, 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 not, um, they're not having difficulty breathing. They don't have a headache. They don't have, their sinuses aren't running. So if, if in your logic, or in somebody else's logic, not you and me, but in somebody else's logic, if the mass part of population is shedding the virus and um, they're not getting sick, aren't we kind of done with this? So I'm gonna get back on topic now because I do wanna talk about um, what you can say to people so that you can maintain your right over your body. If you are the person that wants to get the messenger RNA reformat to protect yourself against serious outcomes, if you are somebody who is in a susceptible class, if you're over 70 years old, if you have other underlying conditions that you believe puts you in jeopardy for hospitalization and severe outcomes, and you wanna take the, the vaccine, the, the reformat, that's your choice. Somebody next to you that has not gotten the vaccine, if they haven't gotten the vaccine, they believe that if they contract COVID, they will be fine. They will get a mild or moderate case and they will be fine. That's what they believe. It does not affect you in any way because remember, even if you get the reformat, you still are shedding virus. You still can be a contagious person. So here's some options of things to say. And, and most of these are not mine. I borrow these from others. So this first one is, I'm not, doing the, I'm not doing the vaccine because I'm in the placebo group. Which don't you think there should be a placebo group so that we can really test the outcome of this thing? Another one is, and this again is some, from somebody else, 50,000 people in five years, because that is a normal drug test, 50,000 people in five years. And let's see what happens. Or, hey, it's my body, my choice, and I'm not hurting you by not getting it. You can, if you believe it protects you, you can get it. Now, there is some bad news with all of this, and I could be wrong. But let me give you a little background. I may be wrong about what might happen, but I don't, I don't think I'm wrong about the fact that something will happen. Back around the year 2000, I heard about the chicken pox vaccine that had just come out. Now, I had chicken pox when I was a kid. I was sick for a few days. All of my friends had it. It's not a bad, it's not a bad disease. If you get it as a child, it's what's called self-limiting. You get it, you, you get over it, and you're done. So the chicken pox vaccine came out and I said, there's gonna be a problem with this. I don't know what it is. I had an idea, but I was way off. I was way wrong. Unbeknownst to me at that time, a researcher, an immunology researcher believed from his research that 
without children getting the chicken pox, there would be a surge in shingles over the next decades into the next generations. This has turned out to be absolutely true. He got his name got slandered. He, uh, he lost his positions at his workplace because he wanted to publish this research. And it took him 18 years to get it published. And in 2018, he did. And he explains in his research exactly why that is, why shingles is occurring. Three out of four Americans will get shingles at least once in their lifetime. I know people have had it three and four times. The reason is, is because children getting the chicken pox in, in confer to adults or give to adults a booster against the virus for chicken pox. The same virus causes shingles. So without little kiddos running around, pre-symptomatic, shedding the virus, the adults don't get the booster and therefore they end up with the shingles. Nobody will claim blame for that, but it is a part of our society now. And here's the real bad news. There's never gonna be any liability for this reformat. Nobody will point the finger. There will never be an admission of blame. But what we're gonna see is we're gonna see people getting extremely ill with chronic disease. That's my thought. And I could be totally wrong on, on the outcome of what's gonna happen, but it's gonna be something. So I've said my piece. I got a little serious on you today, I apologize. So you have what to say out in the world when it comes up in conversation, people are so excited about it. So my favorite is I volunteered to be part of the placebo group. So as always, inviting you to take back your power and your knowledge so you may get your greatest joy out of life. <laughs>